Let me get one more. You two. know that gets left on that one three, when you do that. Four. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> sorry for being late. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I had to wait to save a video. We were running. Video. We were trying to get there. No, I had to save a video. Oh, on my we had to save took a video. A long time. Oh. Strange human. <laughs> How was your workout? My workout was good. What'd you do? Today was back. Okay. And I did abs. And I did my cardio blitz. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's so good. I got all that in today. And tomorrow's Wednesday. Well, I won't be doing the cardio blitz tomorrow. Okay. So, good morning, Laura. Morning, Laura. Um, I did cardio today. Or I did something that resembled cardio. I rode the bike. How much actual cardio and like heart rate up I got is questionable. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. I rode 10 miles. Yeah, you were on there for a while. So there so. that is. Yeah. But I was also watching videos about eggs. Well, that's important because that's our topic for today. Right. So what are you eating for breakfast? So this morning I am having ready people. Ready? Are you ready? Here it comes. Oatmeal. What? Go ahead. I'm having oatmeal with uh, chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. Uh, is there more seeds in there? No, probably not. Spirulina, amla, raisins, blueberries, banana, and cinnamon. And I have all of that, plus I put raspberries and turmeric and black pepper in mine. Russ has his turmeric and black pepper in his tea. Right, that's my turmeric black pepper tea. And as you, we told you last week, we put black pepper with our turmeric because black pepper, even a small amount, a tenth of a teaspoon, um, increases the bioavailability of turmeric to the body. Right. And the sun came out from behind the clouds and boy, wow. it got bright. It just got bright. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's breakfast. Oatmeal for oatmeal. both of us. It's good stuff. Looks good like stuff. roll though. His is green, but mine is red because of my yeah. raspberries. The raspberries. So that's Stronger than the spirulina as far as coloring goes, I guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we'll be eating that later. Yeah. But we wanted to talk to you about eggs. Yes, eggs. And for the record, I've eaten more eggs in my lifetime than most humans probably do. Because when I was bodybuilding, my normal get-go in the morning, after I had my first workout, I had my breakfast, which was 10 egg whites. Yes, I said 10 egg whites. With two servings of oatmeal and then a banana. And I used to uh, put either strawberries or whatever fruit of the uh, season was in. Mm. That was every single morning. Wow. And would you just throw away all the yolks? All the yolks made it to the trash. Okay. Yeah. So the reason that I wanted to talk about eggs is I saw an interesting conversation yesterday in a vegan group that I'm in about um, eggs. And they were talking about whether eating not fertilized eggs was okay, but eating fertilized eggs was eating a baby and that wasn't okay. Mm. And I thought, what is the difference? Who cares if they're fertilized or not? But then I realized, oh, that's ethical vegans. So right. if, it's, if you're eating vegan for ethical reasons, then it matters if it's fertilized or not. Right. If, like us, you're eating whole food plant-based for the health benefits of it, it has nothing to do with the ethical. I mean, the ethical is great. Don't get me wrong. I yes. love that no animals are dying. Right. But um, she hated eggs. Yeah, I'm not a, I wasn't a fan of eggs growing up either. My parents used to make me eat um, eggs from our chickens that were... Uh, Raw in my orange juice. Ooh. Yeah, my mom used to do that too. We'd, we'd, make, we'd put milk and raw eggs and um, chocolate, Nestle's chocolate quick stuff. In the blender, blend it up, and that was what we would eat for breakfast. What are sometimes. you guys, Rocky? Ba -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so I decided today that I was going to uh, do some research on eggs because I know we've talked about eggs as part of being the animal protein, and that they um, they you know they cause all the same risks that animal proteins do, raise right. your risk of cancer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Love the thumbs up. Thank you. Thank Those you. are always fun. Um, but I actually wanted to get some information about eggs specifically to share with you. Um, because people ask, well, what about eggs? And I've always said, well, they're animal protein. But let's talk about eggs specifically. So first of all, there's a commission, the National Commission for Egg Nutrition. Right. Guess who funds it? Can you guess? Um, the egg people. The egg industry. Yeah. Yay! Gold star for you. Good job. High five. <laughs> So the egg industry funds the National Commission for Egg Nutrition, and they have been successfully sued by the FDA of all people. Right. Apparently, I told Russ this morning, apparently the egg lobby is not as strong as the beef lobby. Right. Because... They don't you know, have government in their back pocket. No, not as much. The, uh, they, they were, um, the government sued the Egg Commission, and it was upheld all the way to the Supreme, the Supreme Court that they're not allowed to use the word nutritious 
or healthy when advertising eggs because it can be deemed neither due to the, the cholesterol level that's in it. Right. So now you may say, wait, there was a study that said that eating eggs didn't raise your cholesterol. So let me tell you how they did that because this is actually pretty funny. This is how they got a study to say that eggs don't raise your cholesterol. Right. The human body can only absorb so much cholesterol at a time. So if you take in, say, 400 or more milligrams of cholesterol at a time, you completely saturate the human body and you get a full, that's as much cholesterol as you're gonna measure in the blood number. That's just how it is. Right. So what they did is they fed people a diet very high in cholesterol from other sources, meat, fish, chicken, whatever. So they maxed out the blood measure of cholesterol. Right. And then they fed people eggs. Yeah. And then they measured their blood cholesterol again. Guess what? So, the number wasn't different. Right, because you can't max out beyond the max. Once you max out, that's it. Right. Oh, so that's sad. when you hear the egg commission say that eating eggs doesn't raise your cholesterol, what they mean is it doesn't raise your cholesterol above the maximum level that your blood can have cholesterol. Once you're already in. there. Right, once you're there. Great, fantastic. Isn't that Good great? Good stuff. So what the what the egg commission does instead is they play for they pay for product placement. Placement, right. So whether they're paying for it on The Biggest Loser or you know whatever, they pay for pl product placement. But one place that they pay for product placement that actually isn't that expensive in the grand scheme of things right. is story time for children in schools. Yeah, which is just so sad. So they're marketing directly to children. Getting them set for their adulthood. Yeah, you know, exactly. Those decisions and you're themselves. right, Laura. The studies are just underhanded. You know, how can I make the finding come out the way I want it to find come out and right. still have and a scientific and study? Was this the one where the woman who read it was basically being paid by the um, egg yeah. board or whatever? But then she said she had no conflict. But then she said she had no conflict of yeah. interest. Exactly. That was wow. her. So they're, they're marketing to children. And so here's an interesting thing about eggs. They are the most concentrated source of cholesterol in the diet. Right. Like bar none. So we've talked about cheese being the, the biggest source of saturated fat. Eggs are the most concentrated source of cholesterol in the diet. Right. I, I thought, I just, um, uh, I think I lost my trend of thought, love. Okay, it'll come back. It'll come back. So, um, the egg board went on to say that um, the American Heart Association said that one egg is fine a day. One right. egg a day. Right. And the American Heart Association was like, wait, what are you talking about? And so what they, here's what the deal was. The limit for cholesterol, if you're healthy and you have no cholesterol issues, you don't have heart disease, you don't have diabetes, you don't have any issues if you're right. healthy. The government limit for cholesterol intake is 300 milligrams. Right. Now, we've talked before about how the human body doesn't need to take in cholesterol, right. that we can make everything we need. So... Any cholesterol you take in, your body has to process in some way or mm -hmm. another. And some people's bodies are better at processing extra cholesterol than others. Mine happens to be terrible at it, which is why I end up with high cholesterol when I eat animal products, because they have cholesterol in them. Right. But that aside, the government says that the limit for cholesterol intake is 300 milligrams a day. Right. So one egg is about 215 milligrams. Right. So if you take in no other cholesterol, right. period, anywhere, right. you can eat an egg. So it's one egg, and then you have to take, you have to, you can't drink you coffee with milk in it. You have to eat plant-based after right. that. Right. You have to be black coffee. You can't eat any other protein of any other kind from animals. Right. Exactly. Right. What is Laura asking? Not to get personal, but have you guys had comparison CBCs or other diagnosis sent going plant-based? So um, we had blood work about 10 weeks in. Right. And my cholesterol, my high cholesterol level prior to going whole food plant-based was 256. Ten weeks in, it was 195. Right. And I just had blood drawn yesterday to get uh, another cholesterol test done. Right. So we'll see what it so is. Stay I should, tuned, folks. I should know in the next couple of days right. um, if, if it's better than 195 or not. So, right. And you had the same where yes. yours dropped down below 200 is the first yes. 10. Yes, mine wasn't as high as it started. I think mine was two. 14 or 218 mm -hmm. and then it dropped down to 195 after that same period of time right um and mine was 214 to 218 for years right years you know my doctor's been trying to get me to take a statin and i'm like yeah i don't think so 
you know? Yeah. Um, but, um, and then it dropped below like 195. Uh, the difference is, um, I mean, my, my LDL at that time was still a little bit higher than I should, than I would like it to be. Mm -hmm. But, and my, HDL was my through HDL the roof. was through the roof. Yeah. Man. But what we're finding out, what, what, I forget which documentary we watched, but they said it's, it's really not good to have super high HDL either. It's not. You know, mm -hmm. so that, that's like, okay, so this is interesting. I mean, the bottom line is 150. And yeah, that's, that's everything we've read is that a heart healthy cholesterol number is 150. Right. So the, I don't know where they get the 200 number. Um, yes, blood pressure was, my blood pressure was uh, lower yesterday. My, I've never had a blood pressure issue, but my blood pressure yesterday on my left arm was 107 over 71, I think. And on my, I always have them check both because I don't know if you know this or not, but if you have a heart condition, your blood pressure will be vastly different on each arm. So I always have them check both arms. Hmm. And my blood pressure on my right arm was 111 over 77. Yeah, so super, so super, super good, good. Yeah. really good. Yeah. Good morning, Michael, good to see hey, you. Hey Michael, good morning. Always great to see you. Yep, good to see you last night. Um, so yeah. That my, our numbers are definitely better since doing this. So let's go back to talking about, um, about eggs. So again, I'm going to repeat this just because we have some new people join. The dietary limit for cholesterol intake as set by the government, which we know how much we trust the government, but anyway, is 300 milligrams per day. Right. One egg is 215 milligrams per right. day. So if you trust the government to, to dictate how much cholesterol you should take in, I think the number should be zero, but that's my opinion. Right. Um, then you can have one egg because they're only 215. Right. Hopefully that's actually it working because it says it's reconnecting. Well, I mean, right here, I haven't um, seen us lose it, so. Um, but that means that you have to not have any other eggs and you have to watch out for sneaky eggs, which are in things like oh, yeah. cakes and cookies and right. crackers and pancakes and basically, whatever. Yeah, basically anything that's baked, you have to look at the ingredients. Oh, it, we did go pixelated. Yeah, a little bit. But Fortunately, we have the camera running. Yes. Um, and if you have... Um, high cholesterol, then your cholesterol intake should be under 200, right. which means no, no eggs, eggs for you. Because one egg is too high. Yeah, one egg is about 250, depending upon right. the um, the size of your egg. Right. So, what's the matter? I'm saying it's trying to come back. Yeah, they can hear us, and they can come and watch the video on our page that's clean later. Right. So. The Egg Commission came out and said, yes, it raises LDL, but it also raises HDL, which is good cholesterol. So wow. it's protective. It's but, it balances. But, I hear a but in there. There's a but. Okay. The HDL doesn't come up enough to offset the LDL raising cholesterol. The other issue is, as we've discussed, they're not sure that HDL is protective as much as we think it is. Right. So, okay, so we can't, can't do that. We can't say... That, it, that LDL and HDL go up enough together that it's fine to eat eggs. They don't offset each other. So that's not an excuse. So then the next excuse that they came up with, and this was kind of a funny one, is that eggs raise large LDL <laughs> rather than small LDL, which is the really dangerous part. Right. So, you know, it's, just, it's bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. And I right. always think that that's a funny excuse. Like, why would you do something bad for you just because there's other things that are worse? Right. Like, well, you know, I can drink to excess because I don't smoke. What? <laughs> but anyway, so it raises large LDL rather than small LDL. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. A ra raising your large LDL increases your risk of cardio events, cardiovascular events, forty-four percent. Right. Raising your small LDL is sixty-three percent. Right. So yes, eating an egg raises your large LDL, which is the danger part. Dangerous, right. not as dangerous as small. So I would say, you know, just don't do that. Right. So then they came out. They had another thing. They, they had, had another thing. Another thing. Oh. There's some good stuff in eggs. Okay. Well, so, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. All right. So it. there's a couple of good nutrients. They found a couple of nutrients in eggs that are good for you. But here's the thing. You'd have to eat nine eggs to get the equal amount of those nutrients that you get from one tablespoon of spinach. Yes. That's so, right. We said one tablespoon. Nine eggs, which obviously is off the charts for your cholesterol. All right. So the claim that they don't raise cholesterol was, is crazy. They only don't raise cholesterol if your body's already maxed out in the amount of cholesterol it can absorb. Right. Um, if they raise bad cholesterol, they, they're, just, they're just not very good for you. They're All not. the way around, eggs are just not good for right. you. Not only do they have, and they have protein, animal protein in them, which we've talked before, 
promotes cancer growth, which they talked about in the videos I watched this morning. They talked about cancer growth in the colon because it messes with your um, biome. Right. Your The bacteria in your colon feeds the bad stuff. So overall, what I'm telling you is don't eat eggs. eggs. I'm sure you're shocked so to hear would that. Be, would it be safe to say that uh, in, in the opinion of r and our journey, <laughs> our number one stay away from is milk and milk products. Dairy, yep. And our second one to stay away from is eggs. Ranked one, two. Would that be fair to say? I think that's probably fair to say. Yeah. But of course, all meat products follow in a close third, probably, you know, very close third, microseconds behind. Right, right. I'm just trying to create a, a hierarchy <laughs> here where it probably isn't one, but I'm just trying to create one. <laughs> trying to tell people. Yeah. Okay, do these things. Right. So yeah, eggs are eggs are not really great for you, fertilizer or otherwise. You know, it, if your um, issue is um, around ethical reasons, ethical reasons yeah. then you care. But if, if you don't care about the ethical, or if the ethical is not your number one reason. And, and as I mentioned at the beginning, this is mind-blowing to me because all those years of eating eggs, competing, and even when I stopped competing, I was still eating four egg whites to two egg yolks for a yeah. long time. Yeah. You know? Um, and it's just it's just sad. And we come, come to this conclusion at the end of um, the China study. It's just sad that all this information is out there for the public, but it's hidden. It's being hidden. You have to actually want it. You have to actually research it to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that thankfully we are able to do that. Well, mostly you were able to do that, but because uh, I don't have the mind. I'll be honest, I don't have the mind for it. Sometimes those those science things start my send my head spinning. But um, you know, but fortunately we can pull the information together for people, and hopefully they find it useful and and um, they understand that we're coming. We're trying to come from as much of a neutral position. As right. we can, because we're looking for what's healthy. That's and, and, and it. What's we, healthy. What we don't want, and I've read two articles recently, I, and I didn't mention it yesterday, but there's one article I mentioned was talking about um, healthy healthy eating, and they talked about eating more plants and all that stuff, and and you get three quarters down into the article, and it says, well, the same researchers also say that you know you can have some meat and some chicken and, and all that. I'm like, okay, so they just ruined this. Let me see why. I go all the way to the bottom, and right there it says. All researchers in this in this study either were sponsored by, have an affiliation with, or were paid by, and it names all the industries, all the meat industries, all the dairy industries, all the and I'm like, and why do they even why do they even put that on print? Why is that even allowed to be printed? Big <laughs> that, that I mean, not, not not that they did that, the article itself. The article itself. Because yeah. that one paragraph, you know, um, nullified if that's the nullified, said, yeah. nullified every bit of information that was in that article. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? And I'm like, oh, God. So the, the, the information that is out there that I have found that anybody can get about nutrition is the information that has no science behind it. The, the, the stuff that's easy to get. The stuff that's easy to get. has yeah. no science behind it. It's big industry, big food, big pharma. Or they tweak the science to come up with what they want. Right, right. Yeah. So, but I mean by no science. I mean, if you actually read the science that they're using and... Um, Dr. McDo Dr. Uh, Gregor. Gregor pointed it out when he pointed out one thing is that they, they actually sometimes will quote a, a, a study wrong on purpose. Like they'll just say that this is what the study said, and when you read the study, it actually doesn't say that at all. Right. Right. So, but if you want real information, you got to hunt for it. If you want to be misled and you want uh, to follow, <laughs> listen to what's in the media. Right. Yeah. Then that's easily available. Yeah. It's every single day I wake up and I go through my scroll on my phone and I read all the nutrition news, and it's all just garbage nonsense yeah it yeah. really is it's sad so that's why we're trying to trying to do this i am currently reading a book called fat chance i don't recommend it it is hard to read i told russ last night i am struggling to understand what he's talking about and there was a time where i would have said oh i'm stupid i don't understand it but i've come to the realization in the past 10 years that if I read something and I don't understand it, it's not that I'm stupid, it's that it's not well written. Right. So I'm very disappointed in, in the way that this book is written. It's not a whole food plant-based book, but I was hoping to be able to get some information out of it that would be useful. And so far, I'm really struggling to understand what he's talking about. Yeah. So that's a challenge. Did you have anything else you wanted to add about eggs other than don't eat them? Oh, I think we said our piece, okay. as it were. If you guys are getting value out of these, please do like and share them. We appreciate it. Like we said yesterday, we're, we do this because we want to put the information out there, the real information, right. the real science in a layman's way. So 
if you're getting value, we appreciate it if you like and share them. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for being here with us. Absolutely. You can also pop over to our website, rnrjourney.com. You can become a member where, where I you know, post a whole bunch of other stuff. There's the community page where we have conversations. Um, there's our journals. Right. There's your there's notes recipes, and quotes. There's my notes and quotes from books that I read. So there's you know so much information available over on rnrjourney.com. So we definitely invite you to come over there. And there's also the opportunity if you feel so inclined to help support us because we are doing this in our spare time and we have mortgages to pay like everybody else does. Right, right. So if and this inclined, is going to wind up eventually. We're going yeah. to have to wind up if we're going to keep this going. We're going to have to bring people on, and they're going to have to be paid. I mean, bottom line, nobody's right? going to work for Nobody, free. I mean, we're like doing us. it for free, <laughs> but not everybody's going to do that. So. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we're figuring out how to grow this. If you have ideas on how to grow this, we're certainly open to those. Please right. do share them with us. And if you have questions, absolutely ask. If you hear about a study that you're like, wait, this one said that whatever, let me know and I'll go and search and find out, A, a is that a valid assumption that they created or a valid finding? Right. And B, how did they do this study to come up with that finding? Right, exactly. And I'll, I'll be glad to research it for you. So people keep saying Instagram, I need to get on there and learn it. I really, really do. Yeah. I haven't done that. I need to do it. Mm. So, all right. I'm going to eat breakfast. I'm hungry. Then I'm going to eat breakfast too. Okay. All right. So, and so with that, we will say eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.